wildfires spark new research in the air lab at Washington University in St. Louis. Principal investigator Rajan Chakrabarty is igniting new areas of study after wildfire chasing in the western U.S. in 2019. This is Ground Zero. Sponsored by NASA and NOAA, 45 days we were camping out of a mobile laboratory packed up with all sorts of instruments to study the physical properties, the optical properties of the smoke which was being emitted from the fires and similar instruments were also packed in the aircraft and then this was further synchronized with the satellites. That study was the starting point of our discoveries which unfolded. Now the aerosol interdisciplinary research lab called the Air Lab, is taking its new discoveries about wildfires to a new level into the stratosphere. He focused on wildfire emissions of black carbon and the lab's new discoveries about organic dark brown carbon particles that enhance the absorption of sunlight and warm the atmosphere. So these particles, once they get emitted into the stratosphere, could cause enhanced warming. In the stratosphere, the lifetime of these particles is up to six months. With the intensity of the threat of light-absorbing particles, or climate heaters, in the stratosphere, the team is interested in the idea of arming the stratosphere with particles that instead reflect light for a cooling effect. It would offset global warming from other causes too. Those aerosols are tested with specialized equipment. The goal is to inject the particles into the stratosphere to reflect the sun's rays before they can warm the planet. So this particular modality of solar radiation management is called stratospheric aerosol injection, SAI, S-A-I. If there is a heat dome with excessive and dangerous heat, Consider the approach like a Band-Aid. For the whole global warming phenomena, but this is more of a local or a regional warming. There has been different transportation mechanisms. Once a, one is, you know, take a load of this material in an aircraft all the way up to the stratosphere and just inject it. Chuck Rabardi and his collaborators explore stratospheric aerosol injection with a $1.5 million grant from the Simons Foundation International. So WashU engineered the equipment to test different particles to discover the right one for the job. To study the optical properties of these particles that are proposed to be injected into the stratosphere. In this case, what we're trying to see is whether when these particles are produced in large quantities, in large manufacturing units, there are some uh, imperfections that creep in to, this, uh, to these particles. And those could trigger certain absorption, which we do not want. Uh, in the stratosphere. We ideally just want them to reflect back the radiation and not absorb any of it and like trap the heat in the stratosphere. All starting with a database of optical and chemical properties of the most promising aerosol candidates for the mission. What the shaking and the clean air going through the flask does is it suspends the, air, uh, the particles into the, the airstream and then those are sent to some conditioning units where we make sure that the particles are they're not the particles are not too large, they don't have any extra charge, because that is the sort of thing that can affect the measurements which we're trying to make, which is of uh, the optical properties. The final decision of whether it's a good candidate or not would be made through climate modeling studies. Our atmosphere is one giant chemical reactor, and we are just trying to only get a handle on a small piece of it. Injection is to prevent the spread of a disease, so here, the disease is rising temperatures, and so what you are trying to inject are small mirrors which are reflecting sunlight, such that, you know, the temperature of the earth cools, you know, comes down. It's more of a banded solution. It's more of trying to stop its symptoms from showing up until we find a permanent solution.